Welcome fellow audio sorcerers, wizards and gurus to my channel. I'm Dan Spencer and I am the audio sorcerer. So this is the channel where I teach you how to affect your recording, mixing and mastering skills. So in today's video, we're talking about how to install Pro Tools, but doing it through Avid Link. Now, if you guys have seen some of my other installation tutorials, we've been installing it using the installers. So this is gonna be strictly through Avid Link. Now, the cool thing about this video is if you guys have struggled installing, if you guys ran into some issues with your computer, some errors, if you guys stick around towards the middle end, I have a couple extra tips in here to make sure that Pro Tools runs right on your computer. So before we get to the video, I do want to remind you guys that I offer mixing and mastering services. If you go to my website, audiosocer.com, you can check out my samples and my rates, and I give 10% off, not 10 anymore actually, 20% off now to new customers. All you gotta do is sign up for the email list and you'll get a coupon code. And if you guys end up liking this video, give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe and hit that notification bell to know I have new videos coming out. So with that being said, let's get to this tutorial. All right, so here we are on my computer here. And today we're talking about how to install Pro Tools through Avid Link. Now this tutorial is gonna be related to the subscription-based version of Pro Tools, or if you bought it outright, this is not for Pro Tools first. So if you guys are installing Pro Tools first, I have a link popping up right now in the top right that will take you to the Pro Tools first installation video I did. Now, if you go through that video and you find that you weren't able to get installed properly, come back to this video because I am talking about some more stuff in this that wasn't mentioned in that video. And this should hopefully get you over that hump to get it installed. So that being said, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go to avid.com. And this will take us to the home page here. And what I want to talk about first is compatibility. This is very important. I've been noticing some people have been running into issues with this. So if you go to Pro Tools right here, this is going to take us to this page here. If you go up to Support, this takes us to the Learn Plus Support page of Pro Tools here with a bunch of good information on it. But scroll down to the bottom here and then go down to Compatibility right here and then go to system requirements. Now, what we wanna do is we wanna check Pro Tools system requirements right here. Uh, if you do happen to be still watching this and have Pro Tools first, you can check this one here. So let's go here. And you'll see that it is supported obviously for Mac and PC. And there were some updates recently to support Mac OS Catalina. But the thing I'm most interested in showing here is these things here. Now Pro Tools does take a bit of juice to run well. So it's saying, hey, you need 16 gigs of RAM, that's both for PC and Mac, and then you wanna have an i5 processor or better, and they even say, if you have Pro Tools Ultimate, you're gonna to wanna have something even way higher than that. Uh, I have an i9 right now, and uh, my computer handles Pro Tools like a charm. So I want you guys to definitely read over all of this here. I showed you how to get to the page. Make sure what you have is good to go before you purchase Pro Tools. And then down here, is little computer optimization section, which is pretty cool. So you can actually go in here and follow steps on how to make a computer run better with Pro Tools. So again, you have the you know, resources to get to this page. If you go Pro Tools, definitely go through this. So the next thing we're gonna do now is we're gonna go back to the Pro Tools main page here, and we're gonna click on the buy button here, because that's the first thing you gotta do. So if you guys have already bought Pro Tools and are all good to go there, you can skip over this step, but I do want to mention here, you got two different options for your subscription. Uh, you can get the regular Pro Tools version here for $30 a month or the ultimate version for $80 a month. I actually just have the regular one and I have everything I could possibly need. So you would click on this here to buy it. And when you get to the Pro Tools pricing page here, you have a couple options for how you want to uh, handle this here. So you can pick which one you want and then you would just go add to cart. And when your cart pops up, of course, just go to checkout here. And this will pop up here. This gives you an option to add a one-year artist cloud plan, which you could pay annually for. This gives you more space on the cloud if you want to save projects up there and collaborate with other artists. That's up to you. And then the uh, Avid uh, Play Plan here. This is actually for releasing and distributing your music, which is pretty cool. That's something new to uh, the Avid world. Uh, I'm not going to get any of these, so we'll go to Take Me to Checkout. And then all you got to do is put in your payment information and then hit Continue. So one thing that it may ask you for, it may not, when you are going through this checkout process here is for your iLock user ID. It may or may not, but we will have to address it later if it doesn't. So what you wanna do is you're gonna to wanna to go to iLock 
www.createfreeaccounts.com. And then you're going to want to go to create free account. And this is where you will associate a user ID with this account. And that is the ID that is going to be linked with Avid. So if you don't have an iLock account, do this now and then come back to the video. All right, so at this point, you should have purchased Pro Tools and you should have set up your iLock account. So now that is all taken care of, you should have a confirmation and such from Avid and be all ready to go. So we're gonna sign back into our Avid account here. So let's do that next. All right, so now you should be in your account section and this is mine here. I don't think I have any credit card information shown or anything, so that's good. Uh, you're gonna to wanna to scroll down here and make sure that your iLock account is linked. So if you, uh, you know, didn't have the option to add this during your checkout, you can add it now. Um, simply, it's probably going to be add for you since I already have mine, but I can always change my ID by clicking here. You know, it's real simple. So let me go back to that page. And then once this is linked, it's pretty much ready to go. Um, I'm going to show you how we need to, you know, finish activating it. It's technically already activated now, but there is one last step we got to do. But before we get to that, let's actually go to view my products because this is where we're gonna go into and actually download Avid Link. So Avid Link will be the first product showing up here. You hit the little down arrow over here, and then you can go to View Software Download Links and Product Details. Simply click this, and then you're just gonna to wanna to save it where you wanna save it, and then you're gonna to wanna to run the install for it. There's nothing special about running install for this. It's just like any other program, just follow the steps. It's pretty quick. So I'm gonna cancel this since I already have it installed. Now, the step that I was talking about that I want to show you now is regarding your iLock. So if you go back to iLock.com here, you need to download the iLock License Manager. Okay, so download that now, pause the video, and then come back. All right, so now that you download the iLock License Manager and you open it up, this is what it looks like. Nothing is in here right now. You need to sign in first, so let's do that. All right, so this is my iLock account here. You can see all the licenses that I have in here. Um, yours is probably going to be empty if this is your first time using it. So what we need to do is get your Avid account linked over the cloud with your license manager. So what you need to do is go up to file and you go to open your cloud session. It's gonna do its thing. And it's gonna say cloud session open, we'll hit okay. And then over here, you're gonna see some of this says cloud. I'm gonna click on this here. And then that's all it takes. And you should likely have a green little arrow circle-y thing here now. And that means that you are all good to go. So we can close out the iLock License Manager now, and we will start the installation process using Avid Link. So one thing that I also want to mention is that if you want to use your computer with Pro Tools and you don't have internet access, you're going to want to get a physical iLock. So the physical iLock looks like a USB stick and you're able to put your license on it. So as long as it's plugged into your computer, you'll be able to launch Pro Tools with no problem. Right now we're doing it over the cloud. So each time you launch Pro Tools, it needs to establish communication. That doesn't mean you have to leave your uh, license manager open. By all means, you can close that. It just needs to make that communication over the internet. So now back to the task at hand, I have Avid Link open here. So when you open it up, it also shows up at the bottom over here in your section. This is, of course, if you're using a PC. Um, this is it right here. Now, if I was to hit the X up here and close it, it wouldn't close. You have to actually go down here, right click and hit quit. So this is my uh, Avid Link account here. You can see that it shows Avid Play under home. Again, that's how you can distribute your music to all the services like Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon through Avid. You could do it all through this you know, section right here, which is pretty cool. It's kind of a one stop shop. What we're talking about now is installing Pro Tools, so let's get to that. So you're gonna to wanna to log in if you're not already logged in, and then you wanna go down to your products. And then these are all the different products that I have through Avid in here. So if you got the subscription-based um, Pro Tools, um, you're gonna have a lot of little add-ons down here from plugins to some other plugins that aren't even Avid that you get for free, which is kinda of cool, like the ERA voice leveler. And I believe this is a reverb here. Um, I still have to download some of these. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to go to the top here where it says Pro Tools. And if you guys are still watching this and have Pro Tools first, this will be the same step here. You can also install it here, but I already have Pro Tools first installed. So my option is to actually just open it from here. So going back to Pro Tools here, we're simply just going to hit the install button. And now it's actually downloading it for us here. 
So this is going to take a little bit of time, so I'm going to come back after it's done being downloaded. But I do want to mention, after you install this, this is going to take about 1.97 gigabytes of space on your computer to install the full Pro Tools. So just keep that in mind. All right, so we'll come right back when this is done. All right, so it's finished extracting, and now we are ready to install it. So I'm going to choose my language here, which I am in Baltimore, Maryland. So I'm going to go with English. So I hit OK. And we're going to go to Install now. Okay, so when this window pops up, we're just going to simply hit Next. And then we are going to accept the Avid software terms and then hit Next. Here you have an option to send anonymous Pro Tools usage data to Avid to help improve their products and services. So you can either hit yes or no for this. I'm just going to leave it on no. And then hit Next. And then we're going to simply hit the Install button. All right, so when you get to your last window here, all you got to do is simply hit the Finish button. And then you're going to be prompted whether to restart your computer or not. You must restart your computer after the Pro Tools installation, so hit Yes here. All right, so you guys should have rebooted your computer now. And open Avid Link back up, and then go to Pro Tools here, and make sure that it says Installed, and then the version. And then also make sure that Activated is lit up in green. And then click on Including Apps and Plugins here. Install all of these, except for the HD driver, unless you have an HD system. And also definitely install the Falcon. This is a virtual uh, instrument here that has some really good sounds in it. And of course, install anything else in here that you want. So now that we have the installation of Pro Tools all finished, there are some other tips I need to give you to make sure that you get Pro Tools up and running properly. So the first tip is, if you see Pro Tools on your desktop over here, make sure that it has the shield on it. This means that it is running in administrator mode. Pro Tools must be in administrator mode or you're gonna have problems. If you don't know how to do that, all you gotta do is right click on it, go down to properties, go to compatibility and make sure that run this program as administrator is checked and then hit apply and then okay. All right, so now that we've got Pro Tools running in admin mode, before we launch it, you need to make sure that you have your audio interfaces drivers up to date. That's very important. And it's also important to make sure that your interface is compatible with Pro Tools. Pretty much all interfaces should be, but if you have some older DigiDesign ones, those likely aren't going to be compatible or at least haven't been tested with it. So just keep that in mind. And one thing you can do if you struggle with anything with your interface when we you know, get to the point where you're allocating it within Pro Tools, you can download a program called ASIO for All. So let's go there to the website and I'll show you what it is. And on a side note, I put a link to some cheap interfaces in the description below that are really good sounding. So check those out if you're looking for one. So this is the ASIO for All website. This is the dress up here, asioforall.org. And you will simply go in here and download whatever language you're looking for here. And this allows you to select within it which ASIO interface you're using. So this kind of helps fix several problems. And I know it fixes quite a bit of problems if you are having issues using Pro Tools first. So as I said, come back to this video if you're having problems with Pro Tools first, this is one of the things you can do. Download ASIO for all. So back to Pro Tools here. All right, so now that we got that stuff out of the way, why don't we actually launch Pro Tools? So let's double click it here. So after Pro Tools finishes launching, it's going to bring up the dashboard pop-up here. So I want you to close this. And then I want you to go up to the Setup tab up here and then go down to your Playback Engine. So your Playback Engine is actually where you allocate your audio interface. So I have a Focusrite USB ASIO, so that's what I've selected, but anything that you have is gonna show up in here. So for your hardware buffer size, I don't recommend changing this here. If you wanna change it, go back to your Setup tab up here and go to Hardware. If you click this Launch Setup app, it's actually gonna launch the app for your audio interface, and that's where I recommend changing it. When you change it in there, it's gonna sync up within Pro Tools and you'll be all good to go. So once that's taken care of, let's go back to File up here and then do Create New, and that'll bring us back to our dashboard window. So in your dashboard window, you have an option to sign in if you want. If you're gonna be doing anything on the cloud, definitely sign in. Um, so you have your Create section, of course, where you create your project. This will show your recent projects you've worked on. And this is gonna show you what projects you have that exist in the cloud. 
So we'll create a project here. We'll just call it test. And then I'm gonna do a local storage session here. That means it's gonna be saved on my computer. And then down here is the location I'm gonna save it at. So if I click location, it allows me to select which area I wanna save it in. So I'll do use current folder. And then if you wanna use a template, you could. You just have to do create from template here. I actually recommend if you're just starting out, maybe start with a blank slate. I think it's easier. I know it sounds counterintuitive, but trust me on that. So I'm gonna de-check this. And then this information here is important. So uh, I recommend doing a wave recording. Uh, there are so many arguments over this. <laughs> so honestly, here's what I tell all the people that watch my tutorials. If you're recording music, do it at 44.1 because you are going to likely be bouncing down to 44.1. That is still Redbook audio. 16-bit, 44.1 is what a CD is. Now, I know we don't listen to CDs anymore. We listen to streaming, but it's still the safe bet. And also, the higher the sampling rate you have, the more horsepower it's gonna take a computer to run a bunch of plugins. So keep that in mind. 44.1 will definitely help you out if your computer is not optimal for recording. So for your bit depth though, you want to leave this either on 24-bit or 32-bit float. Um, I've been using 32-bit float lately, so I'm going to put it on there. Don't do 16-bit. Um, you're going to bounce down to it, but there's no reason to record at it. And then for your I.O. settings, uh, if you're using Pro Tools a lot, you can use Lash Use. I usually just put it on Stereo Mix to be safe. So these are pretty much all the settings I do to begin a session. So all we have to do now is hit Create. Cool, so there we go. We have our session created and it is blank, of course. So I'm not gonna show you guys how to begin recording in Pro Tools because I have a whole Avid uh, tutorial playlist, which has popped me up in the top right corner now. It has tons of videos in it and I'm adding videos every week to it pretty much. So if you wanna learn how to be a, you know, an expert at Pro Tools, definitely check out that playlist. So I hope you guys were able to get Pro Tools installed successfully. And if you guys end up liking this video, give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe and hit that notification bell to know when I have new videos coming out. So that being said, until the next video, I will see you guys later and peace out.